Hey everyone, I'm Keychain. Uh, this video is going to be a guide on the new event, Uncharted Seas. Um, now, I've played this on the test server for a couple of days, and I'm going to give it my best shot uh, at doing a guide with the information that I have uh, and kind of what I've learned so far. So, um, you know, we'll do our best. The first thing I want to look at is up here in the Uncharted Seas, when you click the question mark, looks like it won't let me click. I'll use the mouse to hover, but uh, won't let me actually click. So, gameplay guide. Um, during the event, you will earn solo rewards as well as making um, contributions to your alliance and kingdom. Um, there's pirate loot. So there's pirate camps all over the map, um, single pirates, and then basically Red Guard raids, the pirate raid version. Um, and as you get higher, you get more and more of these pirate loot uh, to drop. So let me go show you that real quick on the map. Um, see this pirate camp right next to me, and I think right now we go up to 15, but we attack pirate camp, and we get rewards. So killing this pirate camp, um, you're going to get a threat victory report, same as the other one. The rewards are a little bit buffed up from live server as far as individual experience. So see here, see here I got 27,000 experience um, for regular Lord XP. Now right now we're capped, so that doesn't help a ton, but if you are bringing a farm in here, for example, um, you'll be able to get huge amounts of experience from uh, killing pirates. And then the regular rewards apply. So that's part of it. Um, we'll get more into the other pieces of it uh, in a second. We're gonna go back to these rules. But basically you need pirate loot and you need lots of it because it's used for your research. Um, it's used for donating to Alliance research. Uh, it's used all over the place. Uh, and that's our next step is you know, using supplies to conduct research. Um, troops and hospitals. So here's one that I hope they fix. Right now on the test server, it's a little bugged, but it says, no troops will die when fighting at a resource node or defending your own castle. There's a very low death rate for troops when fighting in an alliance building and landmarks and when attacking other players' estates. So that's the piece that's broken right now. Um, attacking other players' estates, you take full troop loss. So that needs to get fixed ASAP. Um, all wounded troops are sent to the event hospital, which does not have a cap, uh, and you can access that inside of your state. So we'll take a look at that a little bit later too, um, and the medical supplies and how it works. It'll tie into research. I'm probably gonna bounce around a lot on this because uh, I'm not an expert, so as I think of things, um, we'll go look at them, especially if it's something that I skipped or I remember after the fact. Um, Alliance territory, while you're the state is inside your alliance territory, you can't be attacked. Uh, the caveat to that is if you're on a line of 100 towers and one of your towers gets cut off from your main headquarters, every single attacked or connected tower is no longer part of your territory. It's grayed out. It's not connected. So, you know, say you're on, you know, tile level 100 and someone takes out tile 3, they cut off tiles 4 to 100 from your main alliance headquarters, and now all of the tiles are uh, vulnerable. And we saw that in one of my live videos, that they cut us off at the source, and we weren't able to attack the center. Um, earning solo points. The other thing that's bugged right now is soloing um, the pirates does not give solo points. Um, it's supposed to, but it does not. So hopefully that gets fixed. Um, but doing Alliance research definitely gives solo points and then um, participating in Alliance construction and those other things also provides um, solo points. Now the other piece here is killing troops from other kingdoms earns you honor points that can be exchanged for rewards in the honor store. On the test server, the honor store does not exist. So we have absolutely no idea what is in the honor store, how good it is, if it's going to be worth fighting for, etc. Now, what I would hope is that it would be 
a Darklands event store, but better. Since you're going to be in this event for seven weeks, I would hope it has things like marquee badges to make up for the fact that we're living inside of this, um, as well as troop speed ups, resources, other type of things like that. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for, but we'll see what hits the live game. Okay, so what else? We're going to look at the map. Um, when you start on the map, so here's where the mouse comes in. When you start on the map, there's a zone here, a zone in the corner, one here in the corner. So all the way around, there's eight kingdoms that are going to join this. And there's bridges that connect each of these waterways. Okay, so when you start off in the first couple of days, you can only expand territory inside your main area. You cannot cross bridges. And there will be fights for bridges. So let's go look at that real quick. We'll go see it in person. Um, I'll zoom up to the top here. So when we first started, we started up here. And let's actually go to it on the map. Okay, so this is um, an Alliance Fortress. Now this isn't our Alliance Fortress, but you can see that it creates a zone and then you get towers that you can build to extend your territory. And your towers have to connect like in Tides of Darkness. Um, these resource tiles, tiles we'll look at a little bit later, but basically you're extending towards, you want to get towards or work your way towards the bridges. So the bridges, and it's a little laggy in here. Um, so let me find one of the bridges. The bridge is right here. So this, nope, that's a harbor. Okay, one second. Um, looking for a bridge, looking for a bridge um, on the water. So we'll find a bridge this way. Okay, here's a basic bridge. So you have to control this bridge. Um, and basically what happens, it's on a timer. So when you start, it'll have a timer of when you're allowed to cross it or when you're allowed to take it. Your territory has to touch the border on the outside of this bridge. And when it does, you're able to attack the pirates in, on the bridge. Um, and when you attack the pirates on the bridge, you can kill that bridge and then you can control the bridge. Um, and controlling the bridge is kind of like KVK or UAC, whatever it is. You send troops, um, you rally, you do all that stuff and um, you know control the bridge. So here's the kind of the rules on the assault for the bridge. Um, your alliance has to have territory touching the border that is connected. Um, and once your troops arrive, you start occupying the bridge. And then there's a timer. And if you control the bridge for, you know, whatever the allotted amount of time is to conquer it, then you control the bridge. Um, and then the bridge will go on peace shield, basically, for a little bit. After that, you can give the bridge away. So the way to do that, one of the strategies here is you build an alliance fortress on the opposite side, on the opposite bank, and then you destroy your territory on the other side so that another alliance within your kingdom can then take the bridge and make it across. So there's going to have to be coordination between alliances in the same kingdom, um, especially if you want to progress together. Now let's go back into the rules and take a look at some of the more stuff here. Um, basically, there's 17 areas in here, and as you get towards the center, there's less bridges and less, um, you know, everybody collapses towards the middle. There's going to be more fighting and things that happen towards the middle. And here's the right to pass. So you have to control the bridges or you have to have a headquarters. Um, and the good thing about this is you can have up to three alliance headquarters in this section or in this giant map. Um, so you can have multiple alliance headquarters linking land up. So you can, you don't have to have one giant continuous 500 tower connected thing. Like you can build forts and, and get towers around that while maintaining your original alliance position that might have a lot of resources you need and would be considered safe. Um, so there's a lot to it. And then the other nice thing about here is fortress teleports work when you're teleporting to your own connected territory. So you don't have to use advanced teleports all the time. So you can get fortress teleports in the Alliance store, uh, kind of stock up on some of that stuff. 
Now the other thing in here, the last part of the guide that I'm going to look at, and then we'll go look at everything in person. Um, there's different types of everything. So there's basic bridges, there's fortified bridges, and there's military bridges. And each one that connects the areas um, has different benefits, basically. So if your alliance controls, for example, um, a basic bridge, I don't think has any benefit, but a military bridge, um, those tend to have like troop specific buffs. Um, whereas fortified bridges, I think I saw one that had research speed or gathering speed or something on it. And a military bridge gave, you know, troop attack. Um, same thing with the outposts. There's different types. So there's the outposts, the strongholds, and the fortresses, and they all have different benefits. Now, one important thing here is the same type um, cannot be stacked. So you can't go and get three pirate outposts that all have 200% troop attack. Um, they won't stack. So if you are trying to collect um, outposts and things like that, you're going to want to get an outpost, a stronghold, and a fortress, or ones that have different benefits on them so that you can max out your benefits um, without wasting landmarks, basically. Same thing with harbors, same thing um, the Devil's Keep in the middle is is the one that you want to control. But, um, you know, leading up to that, there's all kinds of landmarks and other things that you're going to want to control and fight for. Okay, getting a drink of water. Now, moving on. Next thing on my list. Um, Alliance Towers and the Alliance Section. So, this map here is where all of your Alliance stuff is. When you click it, it's going to bring you into your Alliance Development section. So in here, you can see which bridges you control, your outposts, your harbors, um, the Devil's Keep. You can see who's got score, um, what kind of points they have for solo points, who's contributing. Now, one of the things on here that you can't see is you can't scroll. So it only shows the first seven, and you can't scroll up and down. Hopefully, that's a bug. Um, or maybe they just want the top seven people showing, and maybe there'll be additional rewards for those people. Clicking the alliance uh, thing up here, whenever you obtain solo points, your alliance also earns equivalent amount of alliance points. Um, and then after you occupy a landmark on the map, um, the benefits are given to your alliance. So see down here, there's troop training speed, rally capacity, construction speed, and resource gathering speed. So those are all benefits that we've gained by controlling the landmarks above. Now the other big piece about, um, the other really big piece about this that's significant is you Oh, lost my train of thought. Okay, sorry. Estate development. Um, in here, you want to balance your resource notes. Um, you got to figure out which resources you're low on and try and find those on the map and balance them. Um, one of the things that we found was in one of the alliances I was in on the test server, we were running out of um, food. But then the second alliance I joined, we were running out of silver. So you got to balance and try and keep your tiles here. Um, and I'll go look at that on the map. But one of the major things that we noticed is these tiles have to be completely inside of the territory. They cannot be just touching the edge. Uh, and I tested this. So these large farms and large resource tiles, those are the ones that give your alliance resources that you need. Um, and then also, they have to be fully in the territory. So this one right here, this one does not count for the FC1 alliance. It's not giving them anything. So when you're placing your towers, pay attention to the placement. Um, there were plenty of, to plenty of towers I put down that were bad uh, before we learned. You know, I was like, oh, I can put if I put the tower right here, I'll have half of a silver and half of a, a farm, and it's it's going to get both of them, and then it got neither. So sometimes you're going to have to pick one, um, and when that's the case, you want to come in here and find out which one's more important. So get in here, look at the resource nodes, figure out which one your alliance is lacking on, um, and then prioritize that. 
And if you really want the other one too, build another tower. Um, you know, it doesn't hurt to have towers just for resources. Uh, that was one of the things I had to go and do when we were short on stuff is I went and found like 10 large farms that were close to our territory but not occupied and build towers at every single one of them to bring those in to our resource nodes so that we could start generating the extra resources. Now in here, you see we have 430 towers, but we only have 195 built. There are so many towers, like it's it's a lot. Um, I don't know if you'll ever run out, but if you have 500, you know, there's definitely towers to, to go around. Um, the other piece of this is the resource tiles. So building the resource tiles um, and gathering inside of your territory generates extra resources for your alliance. So that's something that you're going to want to constantly think about is if you are low on silver, <clears throat> put a silver mine down and have everybody gather in it so that extra silver goes to the alliance. So there are things that you can do to make up for deficiencies in resources. Last but not least, alliance research. Alliance research is very powerful. Um, and this is also where donations come in. So one of the things we found out is, you know, for an example, um, I don't have it now because I'm not an R4 in this alliance, but you can set um, researches to be additional, kind of like the star in main research. So um, basically you get an extra 20% contribution rate um, and you can tell your members which ones you want them to donate to. But in here, you can increase your building's durability. You can increase your demolishing speed. You can increase the amount of towers that your alliance has, going all the way up to the magic number 500. Um, you can increase the amount of alliance fortress fortresses you have. And then here's a fun thing. Uh, I wasn't going to get into this yet, but it's here. Ultra rallies. Ultra rallies cost 5,000 gold. You can have an ultra rally, you can have an ultra garrison. Now, basically what that does is when you set an ultra rally, there's the ultra rally leader and you pick two lieutenants. The lieutenants or the deputies um, give 5% of their, tr of their total stats to the ultra rally leader. So you're gonna want your three strongest, if they're all online, to join that so that you have the strongest ultra rally possible. And the amount of um, recovery speed, so you have a certain amount. Um, an example here, it's, we increased it here by plus two. So you can have, uh, I think it's two, that's an extra two, and I think there's one or two total. So I think you can have either three or four sitting. Um, and then the recovery time, I don't know exactly what that is. But we did reduce it by as much as we can with this research here. We reduced it by 100%. Um, so yeah, it's it's here. <laughs> um, we got to experiment with it a little bit. It is pretty fun, but it's also a new thing. It's hard to coordinate. So I think that's it for the Alliance part of it. Um, let's get into individual research, which is right here on the globe. So one of the things that we noticed right away was if you go into the battle tab, you don't have any research you can do until level six. Uh, and over here, this globe, when you start in here, you're at research level one, and you have to spend resources here and you'll level it up. And it takes you know a couple of hours, uh, increasing difficulty as you go. Um, so the best thing to do when you start is start leveling up your supply storage and your fast sorting. So this is where we get into how research works with pirate supplies. Now, looking at the research tab here, um, the research level is linked to your research level on the left here. So I'm research level 12, so each one of these, see how it has a number next to it, going all the way to 12? Even if I completed these researches before this, if I was only research level three, I can't do anything on the four tree. 
or if I'm research level two, I can't research anything, you know, above that. So you've got to keep leveling up your research level while completing researches over here. Okay, so research is very important. One of the biggest things, the most important things that I recommend that you get right away is backup supplies. Backup supplies helped me a huge amount, ridiculous amount. Backup supplies was the best research I've done. Let me show you why. Out here, this little treasure chest crate here is your backup supplies. So when you click this, after you've researched this, um, basically you can collect these supplies. I'm at my limit, so I can't, and I have too many supplies, so I can't collect this. See, this is, you know, a million um, 40,000 supplies, and that goes up as you kill pirates, um, but it starts off on an eight hour timer, um, and you can increase the amount of collection attempts you have, but it makes it so that if you're out of stamina, and you're still ready to keep researching or you need supplies for healing um, or other things like that, that you can use a backup supplies to get what you need. Okay, so back into research, there was the backup supplies. Also this fast transport, you can research this to increase your backup supplies recovery speed. Uh, and then down here, you can increase the amount of backup supplies attempts you get. Uh, and then the final super important research is this specialist operation. What this does is it allows you to use supplies instead of medicine to heal your troops. So let's go take a look at that, then we'll come back and look at research. So inside of the hospital, the Uncharted Seas Hospital, when you have wounded troops, like I do now, you can select either medical supplies, this top one, or directly from your regular supplies uh, on the bottom option. The reason that's important is because backup supplies mean you'll be able to heal immediately. If I use, for example, my medical supplies and I run out and I don't have the research to use supplies first, then I'm just kind of stuck. I have to, I'm sitting here waiting for medical supplies to charge. So right now it's, you know, 40 per minute. So that's not much. I haven't maxed out my medical supplies research, so it'll definitely be higher than that. But for now, um, that's what it's at. And, you know, I'm just kind of waiting. So when I'm going to heal, I could use supplies directly right here, um, or I could change it to medical supplies if I wanted to use those. Right now, I'm going to use these directly. Uh, the other nice thing about healing in this <clears throat> is, see how cheap it is, one, but see right here, when you click that, you can actually use your healing speed ups, which is great because most of us have tons and tons of them saved up. So there I just healed. Um, and then I can show you also, like, if I want to heal directly with supplies, well, I can do that. And, you know, the same thing. I can get in here. I can use the healing speed ups. And bam, I just healed again. So, you know, you can keep healing in here. There's two different ways you can do it. And now I can show you backup supplies. So since I used up some of the supplies I had and I'm not at cap, I can collect the supplies. But I can only collect it once because I'm capped out again. But see, it's on an eight hour timer until it refreshes again. But now I see I have 2.8 million out of 2.3, so right here. And then I have 20,600 20, um, of the pirate supplies. And these get converted into, um, pirate loot converts into supplies. My current rate is 54,000 an hour. So if I was out of um, supplies and I just wanted to slowly build those up, I would go get a bunch of pirate loot and it'll start com converting it to supplies. So that's the other reason that research is important. So there's all this medical supply storage, fast sorting, um, you know, increasing stuff. You can increase the acquisition of your medical supplies, um, the amount you can store. You can increase the rate that pirate loot converts into supplies. Um, there's lots of stuff to be done in here. But the, the most important part of personal research is battle. And I'll tell you a quick story about why this is important and why it matters.
So, when I first landed in uncharted seas, I could not kill a level 6 threat. I tried with every single march. I tried all kinds of combinations. I could not kill a level 6 threat. Um, they're just, they're strong. But, this wording is misleading down here. Pirate health plus 770. But basically what that means is when you're attacking pirates, your troop health is plus 770. So if you go and look at your troop health, um, let's go look at a tier 12 troop. Um, so to do that, I go in here and I click this little eye icon and see this troop has 195 health. So giving him plus 770 is massive. And you need it because the pirates are really strong. But that increases as you go along. So when you first, you know, when you go from research level one to level two, you'll get like plus four. Uh, and then, you, you know, you keep increasing. Looking at this first tier of pirate health, I started getting plus one health and then plus three, plus six, all the way to plus 65. Same thing for attack and defense and health two and attack and defense. Um, you unlock personal ultra rallies and the boost and all of that stuff. So the thing here that makes a huge, huge difference is these bottom two. So these here, this one and this one and this one and this one. Looking at this, it's damage. So the damage stat is the most important stat in the game. Okay, it multiplies all of your stats are multiplied into your damage. And that's the reason why you might have way more stats than somebody else. But if they hit you when you don't have your airship, even with lower stats, they're going to decimate you because the damage stat is so powerful. So this research that increases your damage and the one across from it that increases or reduces the damage you take are very, very important. And the very bottom tab, here's a bonus. When you're doing mega rallies, ultra rallies, ultra garrisons, etc., on buildings against other players, not against castles, but on buildings, like when you're fighting for the center, when you're fighting for bridges, when you're fighting for those things, extra damage and extra damage mitigation. So you need your rally leaders to focus on personal research. They have to get down to the personal research and they have to max those out as soon as they can. Because having a higher damage stat than someone else, even if they have higher stats, you're going to come out ahead. And it's going to make a big, big difference. So don't slack on your research, um, both for attacking pirate threats and for the rallies. Now, the other reason this is very significant is I was placing very highly every time we fought a bridge or a landmark, I was getting first or second place, even though people attacking had way more stats than me. And that's because I focused on the research. So when I was attacking those bridges, um, I was doing way more damage to the pirates occupying the bridges than um, the people that I was in the alliance with. So don't slack on research. Now, the next thing I wanted to talk about, um, there's, well, I've covered most of it actually, but there's pirate attack leaderboards. I don't think I'm going to be able to find one that's unoccupied to show um, what the leaderboard looks like. Because we need one that's not been occupied. And let me see if I can potentially find one. Uh, so I might, I'm going to browse around the map for a second if I even can. Okay, here's one. So, clicking on this landmark. So this one is still occupied by pirates. So if I was going to assault this, um, let's click. See how it has 100 health at the bottom here? So there's 100 pirate health, and then there's reward details. Um, so see the other thing here is you get bonus um, resources when gathering in your own territory by 30%. And it just shows, you know, the basic rules here about pirate assault, um, reward victory, top five, all that stuff. It's all in here. Uh, I'm not going to read it all. But look at the reward details. So first, occupation rewards. If you participate in this battle, you're going to gain these honor points, or the solo points, rather. 
some speed ups, gold, and resources. But then there's also kill rewards for the top five members, scholar scrolls and healing speed ups. Um, as you go up in difficulty, the rewards go up in difficulty. So I think one of these, um, the participation reports, I think I got 10,000 gold and way more resources than that. So very important, again, to do your research and to be online when the pirate outposts are going to be coming up. Um, you know, coordinate with your alliance. If the timer is going down at two in the morning, well, then your European team is going to get the benefit of that. But the way that these are spread out, they weren't always at the same time. So I got to a lot of these, but I also missed a lot of them. Um, so, you know, you might need an alliance that has different time zones so that you can maximize everybody getting uh, as many landmarks as they can. Let's see if I can find another landmark that's untouched, which I think I can because this area was uh, not one that was occupied. So nobody got over here. So here's another pirate outpost. Um, this outpost, same thing, bonus resources when gathering. But you could go around and just collect all of these up and you know do what you can to increase your benefits while you're in here. Um, if you get increased training speed and research speed and construction speed, uh, it's going to help your alliance out. Okay, so I covered the basic rules. I covered alliance towers. I covered. I did not cover resource tiles. So let me show you guys something really fun. Check out these resource tiles. Let me see if I can find a level one first so I don't spoil it. Find a level one resource tile. I cannot find it in this area. Okay. Let me scroll back to a starting zone. So I'm going to scroll back to a starting zone over here and find a level one tile. So here's a level one resource tile. Look at that. 600,000 food on a level one tile. Then we've got 700,000 food on a level two tile, 800,000 on a level three, and 900,000 on a level four. I don't know if I've even seen a level five. And one million food on a level five resource tile. So I highly recommend, if your alliance is not full and you have a farm that you actually play that you use to gather, bring that farm in here. Because I would love to go to bed with my farms gathering 5 million food and, you know, waking up to them having that. That's going to help me so, so much long term. Um, okay, I think that's it for this guide. Um, pretty long. A um, lot of talking. Take your time. Get through it. Um, if you have questions, you know, ask in the comments. I will do my best to answer it. Um, you can also go back through all of my live test server videos and check out some of the gameplay and some of the things as we're learning it. Um, I think I did three live streams on the test server, so there is a lot of footage from that, and you can kind of piece your way through it if you would like. Okay, um, I think that's it. Uh, remember to hit the like and subscribe, share the video, and... I will see you later. Thanks for watching.